Mary Me, Annie here. This is my second installment, the final installment, to the Season of Beltane, Season of Sun and Storm videos. The first video was supposed to have been the one and only. I reloaded an old video, didn't realize that it wasn't working right until after I had deleted the original version. So now there's a part two. And it's the part of it that was meant to discuss the gods at Beltane and for the season of Beltane. And where that first video left off, I was talking about the god himself, who has been whole into himself, coming into his own through Imbolc in the season of individuation and discovering who you are, exploring your uniqueness. And then he got out and about, and through the season of Ostara, he's active in the way that he and all of us who live in the physical world are experiencing it. Using all of our five senses to explore and be intimately connected to everything that's around us. Reveling in life. Experiencing everything that it has to offer to its fullest. That season of Ostara is not about a relationship to anyone else. It's truly that gloriously self-centered aspect of life. When it's all about us, and that is the healthy way to be. Working from that place that is all about us. Goddess has been present in his life in the way that I look at the wheel of the year. Because there's not a time in his life, or in our life, that she is not present. They have been together. They've been celebrating that awesome, amazing, delicious living of life, which includes their coming together. But there's something she knows that he hasn't had a sense of until now. While he's enjoyed her company, no, oh, he has enjoyed her company. It's been for the pure pleasure of it, for the fun of it, for the celebration of life, the vigor and the excitement and the thrill of living. But she now asks him to consider something else. She wants more from him. She wants it to be about him and her together. She knows that for the wheel of the year to turn, he cannot continue to be the fawn or the stag, taking his pleasure from life but remaining disconnected from others in it. The wheel of the year can only turn if he begins to understand who he is in relation to others. Midsummer is when he'll take up the kingship of understanding who he is in connection to others, his responsibility to community, stepping into his sovereignty, who he is and what he brings to that. But the first step to that, the first step in this next phase of the maturation of the Lord of the Greenwood is a relationship with one person one other person. In that way, he's going to see himself reflected in her eyes. He's going to get a different perspective on himself. He will come to understand that he's not complete, as he may have thought he was in those early days of spring, all by himself. It might not seem like this greatest of decisions that he has to make, this becoming one with the goddess in the sense of being partnered with her, joining two souls. But she is not only asking more of him, perhaps all of him, she's also asking for his death. That is the fantastic simultaneous holding of the season of Beltane, the glorious se season of coming together with others, a one particular other, of celebrating the body and sexuality 
and union and the pure pleasure of that. But for him, in the wheel of the year, giving up his complete autonomy where he is completely whole within himself and may enjoy the pleasure of another's company but doesn't need it, he is making a commitment to another is the beginning. In this wonderful time of flowers and fresh breezes and pure sensuality, the beginning of his acceptance of his death. And why is that? Well, the first thing, Goddess demands all of him. She demands all of us. I've mentioned to you in previous videos, the will of the year when it comes to the God, to me, is a deep connection to our humanity. He, like we, lives, matures, and passes. There's a limit to the days in which he can experience life. He makes decisions in the turning of the year, what to make of his life, what he'll sacrifice along the way, what his great sacrifices might be some sense of the purpose of his life. We are one with him, we human folk. We have a beginning date and we have an expiration date. And it is what we decide to do in that period of time which defines us. His first major decision along his life course is a major decision shared with humanity. We all come to a point in our life when we start to appreciate what others offer us. We start to see ourselves from another perspective. We realize it's not all about us, disconnected and on our own. No matter, we may be creatures who love our solitude at times. But she's asking a lot of him. She makes it clear to him in the turning that I just don't want your body. I don't want the pleasure that you bring. I don't want the pleasure of what happens between the two of us to be the end or the penultimate goal of our relationship. I need more than the life you bring me, the seed you plant in me. I need all of you. You are meant for more than that. We are meant for more together. So we have this wonderful season of exploring the sensuality and the beauty of existence with this poignant, powerful undercurrent that it's a limited existence. There's a traditional response he makes to her when she makes it clear she is asking all of him. And there's a hint to the way she tells him, that is her demand, that it's all or nothing, Bubba. This is the way it will be, or we will not be. There's a part of him that's so desperate for a continuation of the energy they share, that consideration of the deeper shadow aspects of that union might be only at the edges, but there's also the part of him that will become the sage in time that knows what she's asking. And he hesitates. Not knowing for sure, but having a feeling of what his commitment to her will mean down the road. In his response to her, in this beautiful season of air, so light and bright, is a rather heavy consideration. His response to her call for commitment is, I fear to take this kinship because before me I see blood on the corn, the shadow of my death. His understanding that through the turning and the cycle of the wheel of the year come llamas with the wheat. He's cut 
down. But there is an ultimate sacrifice he makes for his committed union to the goddess. It's a choice. He chooses to be with her. Not in a lighthearted sense of, let's continue this wonderful thing that we've been exploring throughout the spring, but in the sense that he has some sense of what awaits him. Imagine her, as the cycle returns every year, knowing she has to ask him for this. She has full understanding of the sacrifice he's going to make to the turning of the wheel. It'll glory you through midsummer. But Lamas will begin his ending. But oh, what he would have brought to the world in that time. She poses. We could say a question, we could say a demand, because she knows that he is the avenue by which life will continue. The cycles of the earth will continue. She can't do it on her own. Not in this Wiccan spiritual view of the wheel of the year. He says yes. After having made that declaration where he sees his blood on the corn. We, aligned to him, live a life that reflects the decision he is making and entering into during this season of Beltane. There comes a time in our lives as we mature and explore the world and come into our own that it's not just about us any longer. It becomes about our one-on-one -on -one relationships with those who will matter for a moment or for some length of time in our lives. Friends, teachers, lovers, community members. But the important thing about Beltane is it's about those individual one-on-one -on -one relationships with others. Oh, this is not without its selfish, in a healthy way, aspect. You can only learn so much about yourself by yourself. Your relationship to others defines who you are, forms you in a more definite way, the way you will be in the world, what you will become in the world. It stimulates you, it inspires you, it challenges you at times, being in relationship to another. The next turning of the season, from Beltane into Midsummer, brings us into a maturation that has to do with dealing with a wider community, what we bring, what we're in service to, what we expect from it. But this first, if we compare ourselves to him, stepping out of the wild wood, stepping into someone's arms, seeing them clearly, appreciating how they see us and growing and maturing and evolving simply through the experience of stepping outside ourselves, joining with another while still maintaining the beautiful power of Imbolc and a star, which is the perfect individual presence that we are. So the second half to the Season of Sun and Storm video that vanished when I uploaded was about the God stepping into his first commitment to something other than himself. And the Season of Beltane is about you and I doing the same thing. Who or what? outside of us is so worthy in the sense of what they bring us and how we grow and evolve through our contact with them that we will make small sacrifices to be in union with them perhaps at some point large 
sacrifices enter the picture. Our llamas time can happen anytime. We're in relationship to something other than and greater than ourselves. But for now, the season of Beltane, it's about enjoying all of our individual relationships with the others who are part of our life circle. Allowing ourselves to appreciate and come to know them. And through that experience, further define who we are in the world. What are we willing to give up from the non-healthy aspects of selfishness that keep us insulated and limited in our possibilities? What can we give up of that? Still retaining our wholeness and our individuality, but in relationship to what contact, union, and relationship outside of ourselves will bring us. He makes a joyous decision to be with her at a level other than that of pure pleasure. He has a sense that it entails responsibility. Yeah, we all have to grow up at some time, and if we're not accepting responsibility, we need to ask ourselves why. The undercurrent of this beautiful, light-hearted season of air and Beltane is what do we owe that and what will we sacrifice in order to be present to that wider experience of living. Mary Park.